Hey guys, it's Dark Barbarian, and in today's video, we're going to be crafting a brand new hybrid base for Town Hall 10 that I'm sure you'll love. This base has a lot of great features, which I'll go into more detail about later on. Don't forget to stick around for the base analysis section, where I'll explain why I'm placing certain buildings in specific locations. I'll catch up with you all after the speed build. Let's do the base analysis. As you can see, the town hall is well protected in the central part of the base. Just like my other hybrid base designs. This is important because it's worth one star and contains a decent amount of loot, so keeping it safe and secure is crucial. This base has another excellent feature. A high number of compartments spread out across the layout. As a result, Enemy attacks are significantly slowed down or may even exhaust their troops due to the traps set up, especially for troops like giants and golems that tend to get stuck on walls while defenses target them. When it comes to defenses, they are positioned in such a way that they protect the whole base and keep it strong from all sides. We've positioned the mortars towards the outer compartments of the base to shield us from spam attacks such as barge and mass goblins. The placement of the mortars ensures that they cover nearly the entire base except for the core, which doesn't need mortar coverage as low hit point spam troops can't usually reach that area. Wizard towers are placed at a distance from one another in different compartments, so that they can provide air splash damage coverage to pretty much most of the base covering a lot of defenses in their range. When it comes to air defenses, they are separated into different compartments to avoid being brought down as a whole by lightning spells. They too are properly distributed and positioned such that they cover the whole base inside the wall, they are paired with air sweepers to provide additional defense against air attacks such as lava loons and mass dragons. Archer towers are evenly placed in each corner of the base so that they cover the whole base and no side is left weaker to air attacks. The expos have been arranged in a way that ensures they cover a significant portion of the base. They're set to attack both ground and air troops since I was facing attacks from both types of troops. Inferno towers are pretty much the most important defense we have at Town Hall 10 so it is our utmost priority to keep them safe while making full use of their potential to increase the effectiveness of the base. Hence, I've decided to place them near the core of the base, because here they are well protected as well as their range covers a lot of main defenses and important stuff like town hall, wizard towers, dark elixir storage, air defenses and expos. You can set the mode of inferno tower according to the armies you're getting attacked with, 
for low hit point and high troop count armies like miners, bowlers, and witches. Multiple mode is recommended, but against stronger armies with high hit point and lower troop count like golems, electro dragons and pekkas, single mode would be a better choice. Cannons are placed right where they are needed providing the overall balance to the base and making this base perform pretty well against ground attacks. The bomb tower is the ultimate protection for hog, giant, and minor armies since it acts as a trap by attracting defense assaulting troops and dealing significant damage to those troops once destroyed. Now, coming to the storages, they are placed in different compartments. Unlike the bases you usually see where most of the storages are placed in a single compartment. Each storage is placed in a different compartment that means the opponent has to take out the whole base in order to get all the loot. We've also placed the storages alternatively, so that even if the opponent takes out this portion of the base, we don't lose all the storages of the same kind of resources. For example, if we put all the gold storages on this side of the base, the attacker can take almost all your gold just by taking out this portion of the base, and if we are losing the loot, it's better to lose it in a balanced way rather than losing all the loot of one kind of resource, so to avoid that, we place them alternatively, just like our base. Now coming to the placement of the traps, after observation of so many attacks on this base, spring traps are strategically placed in different compartments according to the pathing of defense attacking troops like hogs and giants, which helps in making this base stronger against ground attacks. We've placed bombs and giant bombs outside the walls to take down the wall breakers. By doing this, we're hoping to break the attacker's funnel and prevent their troops from entering the base. Instead, they'll likely head for the outside trash buildings, which will ultimately cause the attack to fail. Seeking air mines and air bombs are placed near the air defenses to help the air defenses take out air troops such as balloons, dragons, baby dragons, and lava hounds. Coming to the outer buildings, I've placed them alternatively, like I've avoided placing the same kind of collectors close to one another. I see most people not putting enough thought while placing those outer buildings so they end up placing the same kind of collectors altogether. These collectors become an easy target to attackers when placed together. Hence it is important to spread them out to make it harder for opponents to take them out. That's it for the base analysis. Even if your base is powerful enough on its own, having defensive troops in your clan castle will benefit you a lot. Since clan castle troops can help you waste opponents troops and time. Having clan castle troops is necessary to make the maximum use of our base's centralized clan castle function. Now go straight to the description I've left a copy link for this base in the description, so that you can conveniently copy it. That concludes this video. I'll see you in the next one.